Well, hello, hello, my dear viewers, my dear friends. Welcome back to the channel for the third time today, surprisingly. But it had to be done because, my God, yesterday it happened. In case you were living under a rock and you don't know about it, now you do. Because the PS5 was officially announced with some games with it as well. I don't know why I'm so nervous. I am nervous today. I don't know why. But today I'm here to speak a little bit about the conference itself. It's not really a conference. About the reveal. About the whole stream. I won't speak of every game in detail because not all games in the list interested me. I was surprised by by some. Uh, the the more unknown ones, not really the, the ones we kind of figured were going to happen, but uh, the more unknown ones, some of them were of a surprise to me. And I'm just going to mention some of them, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you do, please leave a like and a comment down below, and if you'd be so kind to go the extra mile, please consider subscribing to the channel for more content like this and of some of the, of the games on this list. Now, I want to start it has to be with it, the one that opened the stream. No, not GTA 5, because to be honest, that was a, kind of a poor opening to the stream. Just let's be real, it was a, it was a little poor. I mean, you open a stream called The Future of Gaming to reveal the next-gen console, and you open with a port from a game that was original originally released like at this point two generations ago so GTA 5 was released on the PS3 then was ported to the PS4 and now it's being ported to the PS5 I mean kind of a poor start but no the opening credits to me at least go not as I was expecting to the sequel of this bad boy over here, but apparently to an extension. So, Marvel's Spider-Man Miles Morales from Insomniac Games due to release holiday this year, so it will be a launch title sort of thing. However, this is not the long-awaited sequel for Insomniac's Spider-Man. What this is apparently, and the news was re was revealed after, a little bit after the stream, I don't know how after, because after the stream I went to bed, because it was already pretty late here, uh, but apparently this game will function as a sort of expansion. Now, if it's an expansion to bridge, like the gap between, a, po a potential gap between Spider-Man 1 and the eventual sequel, or if it's going to be set in the far future that events of the of the second game will allude to or give room to we do not know the thing is spider-man miles morales will function like lost legacy for uncharted it's his own thing set in the universe it's not as big uh, if i if we're to take that literally it's not going to be as big as possibly the first spider-man but it will be his own thing and it will be a cool adventure for us to play with Miles Morales and to experience some new powers that potentially will be in the sequel. So if nothing else, I feel that this game will be sort of a test run, sort of a test run for the sequel that will eventually drop later down the generation. Now, next on the list for me was Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart, also from Insomniac Games. I gotta say, Insomniac really nailed it in this reveal, in this stream, because granted, uh, Spider-Man Miles Morales is not a full-fledged game. Or, well, it is, but it's not gonna be on the scope as the first one, as I imagine. But they came forward and announced two titles for the launch of the PS5. So that is really, really cool. And also, going back to, to Spider-Man, I guess that, that basically confirms, and it's confirmed that Marvel's Spider-Man will have a port over to, to, the PS, to the PS5. So it's okay. I just hope they launch, they will probably do launch uh, Miles Morales, the expansion, separately just so it doesn't force people 
to buy the 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 port, the, the PS5 port for the first for the game because that would be kind of cheesy and I really don't see them doing that. I, I really do think they're going to do a Lost Legacy type thing. But as I was saying, the next one is Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. At the moment, I am not a huge Ratchet and Clank fan. I only played parts of the of the reboot that was released a few years ago. I don't know. 2014, 16, around around that those days. I don't really remember that. It, I actually have it installing right now, so I can go back, play the campaign again, like from scratch. Because I left about 25% of the game. I don't, I'm not sure. I'm gonna I'm gonna do it again. So I'm gonna actually do it again. Um, when I was watching the stream, I saw. I started seeing the trailer and I was like, huh, what can this be? And then Ratchet appeared and I was like, I need to tell my sister this. My sister is crazy for Ratchet and Clank. And so I was like, on Messenger, just sending her a text, Ratchet and Clank, PS5 stream, go. Like, and she was all bananas over it. And then there's the female Ratchet or the female Lombard that appears at the end. I probably butchered the name of Ratchet's race, I'm sorry. Again, I'm not an expert. And she appeared at the end of the stream of the trailer. That was a fun thing with that because I didn't notice right away that she was a female. That it was a female. I was like, oh, cool. A, a white version of Ratchet. But then both my sister and my girlfriend were like, dude, that's a, that's a she. And I was like, is it? How, how do you know? The voice? And I was like, what voice? Because I hadn't heard. I was like doing two things at once at the time. And I was on Twitter and I was trying to pay attention and the stream was lagging. And I was like, okay, I went and listened and I was like, ah, oh, look at that, it is a girl. But yeah, with the whole thing, I don't know if it's literal dimensions or portals to other points of the same universe, the same dimension, but... The game has some very interesting mechanic to show and it was a bit all over the place during both the trailer and the gameplay. Not so much on the on the gameplay but more on the on the trailer, but I guess it's it's expected to be so. But yeah, it's really, really I'm really really interested to see more of that in the future. Now, I have here on my list Project Athea but I don't actually remember what Project Atea is about because I I haven't seen the trailer yet. I'll have I'll try to have all the trailers going while I while I speak. So I will see the trailer now as I go along if my internet allows it. But it's a game from Square Enix and Luminous Productions. And I remember that the first yeah, it's this one, yeah, I remember. The first instance and as this cool looking beast but yeah i remember the first instance where she is jumping around the things yeah it's this part Oof. and the powers the wood things it just looks so cool like if the even if this is one of those more linear sort of open world games like it has a freaking dragon look at this even if it even if it's one of one of those more linear open world games like for instance god of war god of war you have an open world and you can go back and forth but the world itself is pretty linear you don't have a lot of massive space to explore you normally usually have zones areas and those areas have very defined paths maybe some paths that are locked with further abilities and I believe that that's what this game is going to be about. Not a massive open world like some others on this list and the one, I, the last one I'm going to mention, but a more linear sort of open world game that you have the world divided in areas and those areas are a little bit smaller, and you go through a more linear story. And it really look it looks really cool just because of the powers. I don't know if it's just the, that sort of wood manipulation. But it's cool. It's it's really really cool. Uh, the next one, and this is more for my girl girlfriend than me. Uh, it's Kina Bridge of Spirits. 
Now, the first thing, and I gotta give it to her, the first thing she said when we when the trailer dropped for Kino Bridge of Spirits, when those little cute things popped up, she was like, I need one. And I was like, okay. And she was like, I need one. And I was like, okay, okay, we'll get you one <laughs> whenever the game comes out. So, Ember Lab, if you're listening, which you probably aren't, uh, if you're if you're listening and if you need ideas to a potential collector's edition, well, you might want to throw a plush a plushie of those of these spirits around. I'll buy one. So you you have an unofficial pre-order right here from me. So yeah, but the game looks really cute. It has a lot of Avatar vibes. I'm not that. I haven't watched Avatar The Last Airbender in a while now, but uh, the game has a load of Avatar vibes. I really dig the fact that sort of, I guess Kina, I guess that that's the name of the main character, Kina, that the staff she has doubles as a sort of a bow and staff, it looks... It, it has this multi-tool vibe, which is really, really interesting. Instead of having different tools, she has the staff, or whatever its main form is. I assume it's the staff because it's the one we see. But then it turns into a bow. She does all these crazy things. It looks really, really cool. And near the end of the trailer, we see that... And that's probably part of the story. She cleanses a part of the forest... I'm just trying to, to re-watch it again. And there's this old puzzle mechanics that's really cool. And these cute kids with the, the spirits that just want to squish them. It's so cool. And she goes like, she does like a, a burst. And it just looks really cool. I can't wait. This is probably one of the games that I'm most keen on learning things about. Because it just looks so damn cool. Like, it's it's different in a sense. It might take a lot of tropes from from a lot of other games, but it's different enough. It's different enough to to warrant my attention. And, a, and an interesting thing that I'm seeing at the end of the trailer here is that it's going to be an exclusive for the PS5. For a limited time, and it will also be available on PC. That is very, very interesting. But yeah, I'll probably end up end up getting getting it on PS Five. So yeah, that's that's okay. The next one on the list, at least on my list, and not necessarily that I'm going to buy it or that I'm that into it. It's Ghostwire Tokyo from Tango GameWorks. Apparently, this game was announced last year at E Three. I must have missed it because I don't remember this game. But the thing I liked about it is the whole... Like, because it looks like we're going to play as an exorcist. Like, exorcising all these creatures in, in Tokyo. And I really dig, like, the things he does with his hands. It looks like we're playing, like, an exorcist version of Naruto with all the hand signs and things. It just looked cool. Not on my radar particularly it's like it's a cool game if it ever comes on ps plus for free like way later down the line but uh i mean it's not it's not on my must buy list i just thought it was cool i found i found the trailer really cool so yeah we'll see now the next one as well it's kind of the same godfall i was sort of looking forward to this game but Honestly, this trailer probably didn't do the game any justice. And let me tell you, the music didn't help. Like, I'm not dissing on the game. It's probably going to be a very fun game for whoever plays it. I don't know if I'm going to play it. It's another one of those that's going to launch holiday this year. Um, so it's an, a launch title, basically. But, um, yeah, I mean... Eh. I mean, I, I guess it was probably just the music that didn't help the trailer, because sure, the trailer looked cool, it's a third-person, possibly action RPG, like, you have, we don't know if you have 
set heroes or if you have one character that can have different armor and weapons. But yeah, Godfall was on my radar and it dropped after after this trailer because me. So the last one uh, yeah, it's the last one because none of the others really picked my interest all that much. Hitman 3 was announced. Uh, I have yet to play Hitman 2. I played the first one because it was offered to us on PS Plus a few months ago, and I don't think I even finished that one. It's fun. It's a fun game. I really like the stealth gameplay, but it comes to a point where I really know. I know why I haven't finished, because I lost my subscription for a while. I wasn't able to renew it because I didn't have the, the you-know-what to, to renew it, and I kind of just drop it after a while, and I started playing other things, and I never came back to it, so it's probably just a matter of me going and install it again. I'll probably find it very amusing, but I haven't played the second one. I probably won't play the third one for a very long while, but it looked cool. The Dubai, the Dubai map they showed looks really cool. I mean, all the others look amazing as well. Hitman 1 and 2 look amazing from what I saw and played. So, yeah. Uh, Demon's Soul Remake, just a quick shout out. I, I am just now getting into the Soulsborne series like I have. I had, I have Bloodborne and Neo from PS Plus, and um, I have been playing those. I played Neo for a while, and I I finished it, but I haven't come back to that. Yeah, and I'm trying to finish Bloodborne, but I'm stuck on freaking Rom the Vacuous Spider, and so my introduction to the to the Soulsborne series was done by the later entries rather than the first one. So maybe I'll give Demon Souls remake a shot. But yeah, the last one, and the one that I was certain that it was going to drop, no matter what, leaks and rumors have been trying to, to confirm this for a long time, and now it happened, Horizon to Forbidden West. And I just gotta say something first, I real, I'm really happy to have confirmed that, Zero Dawn is just a subtitle because there was this confusion with, for me for a while that is the game going to, going to be called Horizon Zero Dawn 2, Horizon Zero something else, Horizon something else, and now it's confirmed Horizon 2 Forbidden West from Guerrilla Games, and I just gotta say, oh, look at that trailer. I mean, look at this trailer. I mean, I have no chance of watching it in 4K, I believe, because I don't think my TV supports 4K. But if you have the chance, just please do it, because I've heard that it's... If it's, if it's already looking good for little peasant me, without a 4K TV, like, I can only imagine what it looks like in a 4K TV. Because, oof. And it, it's going to have a mechanic that I am really, 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 really fond of in games, it's underwater exploration. Like, underwater exploration done right, because some games have underwater exploration, but you can't really do anything in the underwater. I mean, GTA V, because I've been playing GTA V on, on PC, GTA V has underwater exploration, but apart from like two missions and the Stranger and Freaks mission, you don't really have any sort of reason to go there. I guess there's the peyote plants. I haven't found the peyote plants yet, but I guess there's that. But, you know, kind of like, and I can't believe I'm going to say this, but Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Assassin's Creed Odyssey has good underwater exploration, like, there's a reason sometimes for you to go there. There's the underwater temples, like there's the treasures that drop from ships when you sank them and you don't get the chests right away. You can dive after them. It's really cool. And the underwater is designed beautifully when the parts that you can see. And I can, on, I can only wish that we had that back in Black Flag. Because if we had that back in Black Flag, imagine the whole Caribbean just open for you to explore and dive as you, as you saw fit. That 
would have been amazing. But yes, a rise in Forbidden West. It's going to be set in the west coast of the United States, around San Francisco, because we saw the Golden Gate Bridge. I tried to wrap my head, trying to read the sign on. I don't know if you if already saw it or if you're seeing it now. It depends on how I edit the trailer. But I've been trying to wrap my head over what that sign on the underwater building uh, has written, but I just can't for the life of me understand it. I'm sure that uh, other people will probably do that, probably already have done, but um, yeah. And last, to finish the video, I don't mean this to be a very long video, I don't, I don't even know how long this video is already, but it's just the design, the design of the PS5, it's it's absolutely fantastic i really like it i mean it's weird i won't deny it it is weird it is a weird design but um funny how if you if you look ps5 just ps5 on google the the images that appear are the ones from the the earlier leaks and rumors like and there's one image i found one image and that's from the stream. That's the image that's probably on screen right now. What I found really interesting is that there's a disc version and a digital edition. There's a disc edition and a digital edition. That is really cool. I mean, sadly, whether we want it or not, the future of pretty much all media, be it games, movies, music, is the digital. I mean, it, it's going to happen. Like... Um, probably half the games I own for PS4, not for PS3, but for PS4. For PS4, half the games I own are digital at this point. For the PC, let's not even talk about it. My Steam library has over, not maybe not over 100 games, but pretty close to that. Join that with the Epic Games Launcher and the, the, the good old games. All that just... So the future is digital, but it's cool that they decided not to make the full leap now, just to give an option for people who still want to, to have that option. My guess is, and I mean, we might as well start, my guess is that the PS6 will have an only digital, because by that point, like, 2030 or 2026 or whatever, like whenever does the PS6 drop way down the line? Um, I, I'm guessing it's going to be digital only. Now they're paving the way for that. Now they're saying, okay, so you have the two options, but be ready. The only thing we didn't get to know, and that's the most important thing, is the price how much is gonna is going to affect our wallets now i actually found an image that was circulating around i guess it was from ign ign uh the price comparison and i thought it was really interesting to see that the ps3 costed more than the ps4 i had no idea i had no memory of that i have both a ps3 and the ps4 and i don't remember that at all and i bought them both really close to launch. I mean, I bought my PS3 one year after it launched, and I bought my PS4 at launch. Like, it was a pre-order. My parents pre-ordered it for me. So, yeah, it was, I found it really interesting. And I really hope that the PS5 can at least keep the same price as the PS4. I, I'm not asking for lower because I think that's probably impossible. But if it kept the same price, it would be... Mm, pretty cool because higher well we just gotta work for it i guess but that is it that was it for the ps5 reveal event the future of gaming uh there were 26 games announced at this stream and uh, i haven't spoken about all of them and i don't plan on doing the ones i mentioned bar hitman 3 and demon souls are the one, and Godfall, I mentioned Godfall as well. Bar those, I will probably cover the other ones on my channel. I mean, Keenan Bridge of Spirits, I really am going to keep a keen eye on. Horizon Forbidden West, for sure. And Project Athea, Athea, 
has really, really piqued my interest as well. Ratchet and Clank is more like, okay, I'm going to try it when it comes out. Maybe I won't buy it at launch, but at a sale or something. Because I'm not really that high of a Ratchet and Clank fan. But I'll give it a shot. But the other three, Kina, Bridge of Spirits, Project Athea, and Horizon Forbidden West, I am most definitely going to cover here on the channel. I will probably do something more with Horizon Forbidden West in the coming days. Just trying to look a little bit more into detail on the trailer, because the trailer has a lot of cool stuff. I mean, it has mammoths, or elephant look-alike things, but it has mammoths. For me, those are mammoths. And you can see early, before the mammoths, before the, the, the title card, you can see like pteranodons or pterodactyls. I don't know which ones there are, but uh, that's going to be cool. So yeah, look, be on the lookout. I have a lot of ideas and I got to start working on putting those ideas out into the channel. So don't you miss anything. Please, if you enjoyed this video, leave a like and a comment both are highly appreciated and if you'd be so kind to go the extra mile please consider subscribing to the channel to not miss a video i am trying to reach 50 subscribers before the 23rd of july so we have a bit over a month and a half to get there so i'm trusting on you guys to make that goal a reality so i will see you guys next week for some more videos we'll start the week with one piece whose chapter has been released I guess, I mean, the chapter hasn't released, it will release, but we know how it works, but we'll see, we will talk Monday, we'll talk Monday, you know how it is. So yeah, now for real, I wish you all a fantastic weekend, and I'll see you next time, bye bye.